All right, guys, welcome back to the Rich Shields Golf Show podcast, episode 225, on location today here at St. Anne's Old Links, here with co host Guy. How are you, Guy? Very good. <laughs> I'm ready to shake hands. Don't, don't make I'm me do a fist bump. Oh, are you really committed? Yes, I win. It feels uh, different. It does feel very. We're much closer together today. <laughs> I like it. And also, oh, we've got guest, <laughs> friend of the show, Sophie Walker. Sophie, you've been on quite a few times now I have yeah but this is on location I've, I've always been to the very posh studio that you, you have, have you have so but you've treated me to a game of golf today so thank you well we did three holes well, yeah, that is a game <laughs> for us isn't it so we're down here at St Anton Links today doing some filming for the Open which will be out exclusively on the One Club app make sure you signed up we'll put a link in the top line in the description but it's been you know what genuinely why I wanted you both on today this weekend there's lots of emotions mm. flying around and yesterday there's a certain football match that I think we should kick things off and get straight into that and the reason why I've invited you both on today because I'm a Manchester United fan as you know mm. hardcore Man United fan you, you bleed me and I cut and I, and I bleed red you cut me and I bleed red yeah we bleed, we'll bleed you I hope so we'll bleed yeah. you and you cut red <laughs> I hope you've got red blood in you <laughs> and this weekend it was my team versus your team yeah. Liverpool mm. Football Club and what a match well yeah what a match and if you weren't aware Sophie Rick now supports Man United it was Liverpool for a couple of years <laughs> this is the and best then, result he's ever had isn't yeah, it as a Man he's United he's gone back fan. to United his little boy supports <laughs> City so he's, out of 225 ep- episodes this is the only time I've been able to proper glow <laughs> so to have two Liverpool fans on I feel very very satisfied today what a match incredible finish any are you bothered You've only got three trophies to play for now. <clears throat> I said to you guys before, off podcast, I like football a nice amount. I like it enough to enjoy it, look forward to it, watch it, enjoy watching it. After the result, yeah, obviously I'd rather Liverpool win, of course I would. I was gutted that Liverpool lost in the last minute or two. But after that, turn the TV off. And I'm like, it's okay. Watch the golf instead. And also I'm a rugby league guy. Oh, course, so, you're a rugby fan now. Yeah. Coincidentally. No, it, it, did ru- <laughs> it ruined my... I was out yesterday. Um and it would have been out out if when Harvey Elliott scored I was out out and then when you won 4-3 I said right next train home's 10 to 7 let's go <laughs> so it, it, it does put a bit more of a downer on on my day it was a great game if we are going to lose one game this season it'd be all right with that but uh, you know it's a good game of football and finally Man United were good to watch well uh, yeah I uh, I successfully made all three of my children cry <laughs> uh, on maybe three occasions watching By screaming last, and yeah, shouting I'm a yeah. very very animated You're a bit aggressive loud with right. um, fan when it when it comes to the last I love last minute goals and then when Rashford missed that chance at the last minute I literally nearly flipped the house upside down even though it would have been offside and then in the in the extra time I literally went berserk and all three of my kids I don't know I feel like I'm failing at the moment getting Jude into United yeah um, that should have converted him yeah, I think going, yeah, maybe me screaming and shouting and literally going hysterical. Probably I need to tame that down a bit. But anyway, all good. Before we get into today's podcast, obviously it's a special one because Sophie's here. It's also, well, it's three reasons why it's special. One, Sophie's here. Two, we're actually at a golf club, not the studio. And number three, today, you know, yeah, <laughs> today we can announce formally. In fact, I'll let you announce it in a second, Rick. But we've got big news to announce about the podcast and the future of the podcast and what people in the clubhouse listeners viewers etc can expect well we love our fans and followers and the the podcast has had such incredible success this week we are launching from roll please a brand new podcast which yes. will be out every single week it's going to be called the clubhouse it's a bite-sized podcast which will be coming out every single friday you'll have the main podcast out on a monday a tuesday. short tuesday a shorter version coming out on a friday every single week it's going to be answering more questions going into more detail uh like i said it'll be bite-sized just set you up ready for the weekend we might talk about the week's golf that's coming up over the weekend uh it's gonna be excellent whether we've got guests on whether it's me and guy uh so friday this friday be sure you are subscribed to all of the podcast platforms wherever you get it spotify apple etc be sure you subscribe get it all downloaded friday we're gonna be dropping a brand new episode and each and every week it's audio 
only. So if you're watching on YouTube, this is going to be audio only. So make sure you tune in Friday. Yes. And the good news is if you already subscribed to the audio podcast, it'll be on the same feed. It'll be like a new podcast in the podcast. It's like a little Friday treat is how I would sell it. Like a mini show. Like a little Friday mini show. You get in the car on a Friday night, work's finished. You, you, you're getting ready to go home. It's, you finish work at three o'clock, let's say, early dark. Boss doesn't know. You're thinking, right, four o'clock, I've got Brick 75 coming out. I'm going to watch Rick Shields battle it around. Where would you be battling around? Well, not bloody Sawgrass. Not Sawgrass. Oh. Nobody's, nobody's going to see that one. That's the result yesterday. Let's not talk about yeah. it. And then, not only that, to get you excited in the mood, get the mojo flowing, you've got a little 20 minute, 25 minute, half an hour, I don't know, shoot me. Who knows how long it's going to be? Little podcast treats thrown in. That's very nice. I love that idea, guys. This guy's idea, by the way. So uh, it's going to be epic. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and again, it's a nice little reward for you guys listening. Um, after the football, which again, I'll stop talking about now, um, it was PJ's flagship golf tournament, the players at TPC Sawgrass. Again, mm. it's a sensitive subject for me. If you didn't see the footage I put out last week, I did lose the entire video from TPC Sawgrass. I say I. We as a team lost the <laughs> TBC Sawgrass video. Um, maybe found one day, who knows? But at the moment. Explain to people listening and watching what you mean by lost, because a lot of people don't understand how do you lose a video. I and know, I don't yeah, really. That's, that's, that's a great <laughs> question. I, say, I bet you've asked that question. That's, a, that's an absolutely times. great question. If, um, unfortunately, I don't want to bring in the person um, responsible. Let's call him Barry, just for, just for a nod. A nod. <laughs> I can't say the word. <laughs> Let's just call him Barry. So, right? Barry, um, Barry is a fantastic member of the team. Team. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's worked for for the team for quite a few years, and he's never really. Made Sorry, st- Barry's too close. Real name. Let's call him Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Larry. 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 And La- Larry's been phenomenal. Um, unfortunately. <sighs> Larry lost his head <laughs> and he lost the footage so what happens after we film all the content typically on every single shoot every single shoot um, we will back up the content and it'll be put on a hard drive so we, we've got the main footage so there's literally a folder saying sawgrass that's on a hard drive and in that folder it's got all of the cameras the A camera the B camera the drone footage everything else in that folder and we normally back that up and put it on another hard drive for security it's a key word safety security back up unfortunately the process failed us and larry gary and barry <laughs> <laughs> um somehow the footage wasn't on the hard drive it hadn't been backed up and it is like literally gone so we've given the hard drives to a forensic team and it sounds quite intense but they're looking through all the deleted files etc etc um that process was about 95% complete last week. It's probably going to be 100% complete this week, and the results still at the moment are 100% undiscoverable content. So that was the bad news. The good news was instead on Friday we released the Cabot Farms video where you went and played with Ryan Ruffles at an amazing golf course that is not yet open, I believe. It opens no. in September time. Firstly, what an amazing looking golf course. Have you seen this golf course? Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. It's called Cabot Citrus Farms, okay? Which is a bit of a bizarre name for a golf course, Mm. but Cabot, the company, own a lot of different golf courses. Apparently, they've got some amazing ones around the world. I think one of their flagship ones is in Canada. And they bought this golf club. I think it was called World Woods originally. Uh, It's kind of on the way to Tampa if you're in Orlando. And um, they've they've basically reconfigured the whole golf course. They're building two golf courses there. One of them which is designed um, on, uh, what's the golf course it's designed on? Oh God, it's One was like Pine Valley. Pine, no, uh, God, what's it, it called? Pinehurst. Pinehurst. Pinehurst so one too. of them is similar to yeah. Pinehurst, and the other one, which has not actually been the turf laid there, it's supposed to be inspired by Augusta National. Wow. Wow. And this one, the one that I played was the, with the original course. Like I said, it's not open until even, I think it's September time. What there's more... It? It's all like sand. There's more it's sand so than good. grass. It's like band and dunes there. Yeah, it is. It? It looks so it's more oh, yeah, sand. Yeah, that's like Pinehurst. Though. There's more sand than grass, and I found more, definitely more sand than grass. Yeah. But I actually played pretty impressively off the back back tees, which is 7,600 yards. Uh, the videos killed it. The comments are amazing. Hopefully you saw a much more positive the version of me. vibe was good. Um, I, I think that was... That was yeah the new vibe that you're going to see moving forward so really excited about the golf course it's called citrus farms because i believe it or not that's where they uh, grew oranges and tangerines nice. that's why i've it's just been farms. in tampa i didn't know about it's that like, it's like I'm, I'm saying tampa but my geography of, okay. of 
America isn't particularly great. It's in Florida. If you were in Orlando and you're kind driving of driving diagonally up, down. or was it not diagonally oh. up to Tampa? Cross. Cross. Definitely west. Yeah, so it's kind of in that vicinity. What does it feel? A golf course that's not open until September, obviously, bearing in mind it's only March now, that's what, six months away, quick maths. How done is it? It looked pretty good. The, from the drone shots, the greens looked a little bit off, but. Yeah, from above, from the, I would agree, from the drone footage, it looked worse than it did when yeah. you're actually on the ground. Mm. And I think sometimes drone footage can yeah, do that, can't oh, yeah, it? Yeah, because it's so vast. Isn't yeah. It? And it, you, you can see a lot more imperfections, but when you're actually down on the ground, it, you could tell it wasn't finished. Yeah. There's lots and lots of construction work taking place. Um, but it's all the things, I, th I just think America does it really well. Like, <clears throat> we also went to Stream Song when we were out there. That video's not out yet, but it's, it's kind of a similar vibe to that. You go for a weekend, you go with your family, you go with your friends, you have a nice golf uh, almost trip there. You've got a couple of different golf courses. You've got a little par three course, which was called the Wedge, uh, again, from the orange kind of nice. family. A wedge of orange, slice of orange. Segment, is segment, segment of orange. Uh, segment Can't be called quite. segment. No, <laughs> the segment. I think it's wedge golf, wedge. <laughs> orange isn't it yeah yeah i think so yeah um but yeah it was really cool like oh that was all floodlit as well this massive putting green one of the biggest putting greens i've ever seen in my life uh they've got these little lodges and stuff yeah it's really 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 impressive i'd love to go back once it's actually finished um talking about obviously impressive golf courses um and obviously the tournament we just talked about the players at tpc sawgrass you went last year self didn't you uh, i went last year and this year it is a, it's a very very incredible golf course for a tournament it's well it's called the stadium course isn't it it's purpose built in fact round 16 and 17 we were we got hospitality on 16 so that was quite cool because you could look across at the tee shots on 17 and see them fly over the water and i hung out at the back of 17 quite a lot but the last three holes are really good so you've got a reachable par five then you've got the short par three and then a real tough 18th hole it, I like it because normally the field is insane and it gives you that vibe of how's everyone getting on before the Masters. Mm. I think this is the point, isn't it, where it's if you've not got your game, like I was thinking Victor Hovland, what's going to happen with him? Mm. He's on the driving range with his new coach working on all this. I'm thinking, well, I'm not betting on him for the Masters. You want to be just nicely trending yeah. in the right direction, don't you? It moved a few years ago, didn't it? Because it never used to be in March. No, it was. Then it moved to May. Right. And now it's gone back. It's perfect where it is It's now. so Because you get different weather. So yeah. I think you got, I'm a bit boring like this, but you got three different winds on 17. So when you play the same golf course year in, year out, the only thing that can be different is the conditions. Yeah. So you stand on that 17th with three different winds in four days. It gets you thinking about it. If it's the same wind all the time and the same weather, as a pro, you just get used to it. It's like, yeah. hand me that same gap wedge. But if you've got to start feeling a nine iron or hitting a, a big sand wedge, then things change. I felt like there was a lot of talk uh, about the golf course this year because obviously it was the 50th year of the players not 50 years at TPC Sawgrass yep. it's moved locations but it's been at Sawgrass for a long time now the the contrast between like 1980 when it was first built and now like all around the first tee you had these almost inbuilt natural grandstands which were really cool like like a proper stadium 17 looked totally different because that island that, where that tree is wasn't an island was it you actually used to have like almost a, a, a slither of ground up to the island you can actually sit around there it actually look pretty good i think it looks better now because the course is just immaculate um and then obviously the result world number one on our unquestionably regardless of pj tour live whatever he is unquestionably the best golfer in the world right now hands down mm. and he and he, and and he, he has showed been it. for a long time scotty scheffler um now he can put <clears throat> that's been the big difference just just it, it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't his to win yesterday. He went out and shot, shot was it a 64, mm. eight under par, to, to win by one. Like, what the hell? I think what, again, we speak every week about Liv and PJ Tour. I think this year, when you look at that leaderboard, you've obviously got Scottie Scheffler won, Brian Harmon, Xander Schauffele, uh, Wyndham Clark, Matt Fitzpatrick, roll up there. And then you've got the guys who were thinking about and live, your John Rams, your uh, Brysons, etc., uh, Brooks Kepka. The, and we said it last week, we say it probably every week, this Masters this year, I think is just going to be so exciting to see all those guys competing. But this event was arguably, for me, because I tried to watch as much as I possibly could, the most I've ever enjoyed a tournament outside of the majors. I think the players is the best golf tournament so far this year. Oh, 
PGA Tour. I've, I've struggled with the PGA Tour this year. Obviously, I've been traveling a lot, but I, I remember waking up on the Monday after the waste management and, and going to the guy that I work with. I don't even know who's won. Mm. Like, don't know who's won. Normally, I've watched it, but I, I, was, I didn't even check my phone. I, I, and obviously the win it's all about the winners isn't it and we weren't getting Rory winning Scotty Scheffler winning we were getting the you know the players that these events aren't built for you know yeah. these new signature events are mm. supposed to be built for the, the big names and it, and it wasn't happening but it all just just came together nicely yesterday and without Rory being in it it was still a very exciting watch and I've been a fan of Scotty Scheffler for a while now and it just feels like suddenly the world's waking up to just how good this guy is and I know because he swings it unorthodox people don't take him seriously but he's the best yeah he's the best player tee to green I mean he's got tiger stats tee to green it's yeah. incredible it's mental it? his swing just doesn't make sense I think I, I saw I think a tweet of Peter Finch yesterday or so, so I think it was Peter Finch and it I actually resonated with me because it was I think he put some on the lines of I've always you know liked him no, I never disliked him but this was the first time he was like rooting for him and I kind of felt that aligned to me that I've always since he's hit the scene I've thought he was a nice enough guy thought he was a bit bland at times no, no offence he just always golf swing quite funky he didn't really blow me away but I think when somebody gets so dominant like he is now becoming you can't help but just be in awe of it and the fact that he's now got his put in much better the fact his foot does move so much that he just absolutely strikes the golf ball even his beard I like him with his I beard I like his beard I'll be honest I think he looks so cool big power move twins <laughs> big power move it does but I just think some, and even now when I look at actually at the leaderboard again Brian Harmon from actually from seeing him win the Open I wasn't a huge fan I heard him on the No Lane Up podcast he won me round I thought he came across really well Wyndham Clark again from No Lane Up and his obviously he was the US Open he won last year wasn't it yeah. I feel like a lot of these guys I'm starting to kind of root for maybe it is down to um, full swing I don't know but I feel more invested but, but I think with the um I think it's actually helped Scotty Scheffler his putting because now you watch him to see has he fixed it yeah. has he, and then oh he's fixed it you know and like what all his uh, one of my friends interviewed him the other day and they said you can ask him anything except about his putting because it was it's starting to touch a nerve yeah. and you want to find a little bit of adversity in them and you think if his putting does start working he'll win every week and guess what mm. back to back weeks because the putter started working I think you're now invested in him because of that yeah well, it's back to back weeks it's the first player to ever win the players back to back years I'm sure I heard that no one's won it and then come top five which I thought Honestly, was crazy yeah. yeah I mean you, you, I think it's a dominance thing because again I was watching last night I wanted him to win and I've never like, I've never really rooted for him even if it was going to go to a playoff I wanted to play off because I think the play yeah. a playoff at the players is brilliant because you obviously you get to play 17th again it's 16, 17 <clears> and 18 I just love I think yeah. that would be such great a there's been a few playoffs where Ricky Fowler won it yeah. as a playoff and I always think that's a great player but still even if it had gone to a playoff I'd have still wanted Scott to win like I want, I think he would have won either as well like I don't think it would have even been a question um, but it must be that dominance you, you know it's why did we become such big fans of Tiger and why did, you know why did, why did dominant people in any sport you end up you end up following know you wanting them to win better do you think as well with this I know it's kind of unofficially the fifth major everybody calls it obviously and, and like you said earlier so with the PJ Tour hasn't really kind of always got you at the end edge of your seat with this one it does feel like that not only is it right before well pretty much right before the Masters it's this kind of fifth major and obviously the best players were playing and playing well how do we get it to a point where like every PJ Tour event has this feeling is that possible I mean if you think about again use this analogy like the F1 every race is meaningful if, you know arguably every match in the Premier League is meaningful you can't win the league without doing well in every game to a degree like what's it is it let fewer yeah, events I, or can it never be the case in golf I don't think it ever is because you're right as much as the Premier League every single game is worth the same points you don't watch a Liverpool versus Fulham mm -hmm. the same as you watch no, Liverpool versus true. United like it, it does have it just carries more mm -hmm. weight and even the F1 like you know you still you could say Monaco is, is a huge race you can say Silverstone is a huge race you know I don't know all of them off Bahrain, the top of my head Bahrain and Jenner isn't it? yeah, yeah it's true. they're not they're not even though they are all worth the but, same but amount but even points. so with that in mind does that feel like they're still closer than like this versus a, a random PJ Tour event what nobody even feels like they tune into yeah, is but, that a, a bigger well, disparity there's too, there's, there's too many there's too yeah. many PJ Tour events like you know every single week it's hard to get invested the, the season is is getting shorter and 
in Formula One, you've got 20, 20 um, drivers, and in the Premier League, if was it is it twenty now? Yeah, twenty yeah. teams. There you go. Then you've got you've got more golfers yeah. to, to invest your time in. I think that that's a big difference. And also, when you're watching the Formula One, they're all going to be there. Mm. You can watch the PGA Tour, and Rory's not playing that yeah. week. You're like, oh, okay. Like, what your favourite? Imagine watching Formula One and Lewis Hamilton's just not not going to drive yeah, that week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'd be re- it'd be so random, isn't it? And considering that's such a dangerous sport, your spies not some of them more out with injuries and you know if they have crashes or whatever. Question for you then, Sophie. We, we've discussed this before. I want to hear your take on this. Right. You you get a phone call this afternoon and it's from um, all the big bosses in the golf world and they say, right, Sophie, we want you to we want you to come up with the new world tour. We are going to bring live and PJ Tour all, all together whatever it looks like how would you make the perfect golfing season and what would that look like I've had this discussion about like a world tour that players don't want to travel as much as you think mm-hmm. like uh, you know travelling all the way down to Australia it's, they don't want to it's very hard if you could look at the LPGA Tour the players on the LPGA Tour don't even go to Asia and it's all expenses paid you know no cut there, there is that. I, the, the way I've seen it for many years now since Liv came along is let's condense the PGA Tour season, start it in January, finish it in August like we're doing. And then if you want to go and play Liv, mm-hmm. have it like an IPL cricket yeah. at the end of the year. And you can decide to play in that or not. You bid, you franchise, your team golf. Rory's mentioned he's not into team golf. Well, he might not be there, but the rest of them will and, and do it that way. I don't think a world golf will work because these players don't want to travel and until they are paid like so when you when you're um, Lewis Hamilton your Mercedes and your Formula One you're very much represented of that and they get pulled from pillar to post I mean you're interviewing Lewis Hamilton 30 seconds before he's about to get in that Mm. car now I do interviews and I'm not allowed to interview a player on the golf course mm-hmm. I'm like what do you mean I can't in- no no join around not allowed so and so doesn't like it but so and so does at the minute the players do have too much power until that changes which I'm not sure it will because I think they've lost respect for that power at the moment with F1 F1 wasn't working mm-hmm. it really no one was watching it it took them all coming together to find a way. And until that happens, um, it won't use, but they need to represent the PGA Tour, represent what their team is, and not be all individuals, which at the minute is gonna be difficult. You know, just something on that that you mentioned then, that I think I've been thinking a lot about recently about the team golf, and you said Rory's not a fan of team golf. And That's only because he said it. Yeah, 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 yeah. but he, he said that. But I actually think a lot of players, I think they are fans of team golf when it means something. So obviously most golfers, and again, I'm just getting this from, from full swing, say how the rider Cup is arguably the biggest highlight of their career and being in that team and the camaraderie and only from my limited experience in golf I just love the junior the team matches and I don't know about you Sophie yeah. but, but do you think if we could get it so that they felt like the actual team side I think meant more then they would enjoy it more but they have this negative perception that sometimes live doesn't mean as much because the teams are newer and not as established totally and, and that's why you have to look the at the IPL how successful that is is because it's in a con- concentrated few weeks stroke mm. months the teams are from areas aren't they in India and and they know they're only going for a certain amount of time yeah that, that that's the way it's going to help and also look with live they jump ship don't they like mm. so and so's on that team one time and then on the other and they don't actually I want to know really why Taylor Gooch, Gooch has moved tell me yeah. like is it why you know Matt Wolf and Brooks Kepka like, have, have the really yeah. fallen it wasn't, out? It wasn't you've well got communicated to, you've got at to all. Tell us, like it's okay mm-hmm. if teammates don't like each other. I'll tell people because they'll love all That's that. That's what, yeah, yeah, I'd be I, into that. I think yeah. the, this idea that you're right that I think if the teams you know like the rippers that we're all from australia that yeah. kind of makes sense because yeah. you're like well that's my team that's who i'm from and i feel like you could play with like that heart yeah, on your yeah. sleeve and it's like no I'm, this is what i'm doing but it, i think the idea of having a, an on season and off season for the pga tour is really important because yeah. uh, you know i think even was it the last hole last yesterday it's like the commentator said oh xander's missed out on this time he's always got next week and you're like oh it no. almost takes the importance away it's like i don't I want him to be this is only chance he's not got next week next week doesn't exist do you know what I mean and, and I think that idea of just it's another week it's another week is an interesting question as well because I'd love to hear your take on this Sophie obviously you've got 
you live in obviously a lot of the time LPGA, LET tours. You were out in Singapore with you last week as commentating as well, which I want to touch on in a minute because you told me something very interesting about the golf course that I didn't know, Gary. And I'd love to know if you if you knew this as well from a commentary commentating trick. Um, <laughs> would you like to see more synergy as well with PJ Tour, LPGA Tour coming together, European Dog DP World Tour and LET coming together more? Like, is that is that? something that you think would strengthen the sport as a whole or do you think still think male and female sports should stay separate and what i mean by that is not maybe so much competing always at the same time because there's certain events around that but I, I do think they should have a week where it's the lpj tour one week same golf course same setup and then straight after the week after it's the pj tour for example mm -hmm. is that something you'd be well, a fan the of the us open it happened at the us open yeah. at pinehurst i think michelle Wee and martin keimer they, they back to back the tours there's, I know we have the RNA as a big governing body in the USGA, but all the tours are different businesses. Mm. They're all trying to fight for the same sponsorship. W what's worked, um, the, the, the synergy of women's sport to men's sport is the FA getting behind it, the ECB for the cricket, like something all encompassing coming behind it. I think that would really help because you, know, you two are now dads of girls. Mm -hmm. What does it look like for a four-year-old girl at golf? What does it look like for a four-year-old boy when the 10, when the 15? You don't want to have to say to your daughter, oh, you know, you're, you're really good at golf, but there's nothing for you now. Now, you, now you're turning um, 14, that's it. That's what it used to be at football, didn't it? Now, mm, you, yeah. now you're turning 13, but there's nothing. I think you've got to see it, what it's gonna be like for them for year on, year out. I gave a talk the other day and I said, look, you know, most female sports people have to have a second career like oh right but if you look at it from a professional men's point of view more of them do not have to have that oh, so I think we need to look at what it is like for just the little girl at like four years old is it going to be the same for the boy can you look them in the eye and say you're going to have equal opportunity if we had more synergy for the PJ Tour the LPGA Tour helping each other out then it would in mm. the long run it would be better the trouble is at the minute everyone's looking short term it's not so a quick this, fix that is it's now. just it, let, let's see how much money we can get and keep our members happy now yeah right now yeah quick fixes there should 100% I think be like um, a mix like Ryder Cup yeah I yeah, think, I think, the, Olympics, I think should have done it with the Olympics. The Olympics, they missed a big trick yeah. there. I thought the Grant Thornton was, was good. I quite yeah. enjoyed that. Um, and th there are a few events here and there th that come together. It, for me, me, media sense, you know, if, if, if so, PJ Tour have got a day with the LPGA Tour, you know, send Lexi and yeah. Rory and, and share it out because the women probably don't have as much media exposure as the men, so they'd be quite happy to do more of it than the men would. It was a bit like, the, was it last year, the Solheim Cup and the Ryder Cup being so yeah, close together? Good. Yeah. That was amazing. Do you, do you think as well the amount of tours confused? It's like, say if you support Liverpool, well, obviously we do in, in football, then now that the women's Premier League is getting so much more popular it then got easy to go out well I'll support Liverpool so obviously I'll support Liverpool women's and even if that just support means I check the results yeah. or whatever whereas yeah. now it's like if you are a, a man and you think right oh, you know what I want to I want to watch more women's golf or whatever it's like well do you then watch the LET do you watch the the LPGA then you're also watching PGA then you're watching DP World we got like, the Aramco series it's quite yeah, a lot yeah. if it was just literally there was a two tours there was a men's tour and a women's tour would that then be easier to I maybe think it digest would be easier, yeah but again, we've we've gone so far past I that. Know, that's what I mean. It's the slot. years down the line almost. So you were out in Singapore. Was it last week? Um, I was Tampa last week doing LET, and then I had two weeks before that in Thailand and Singapore with the LPGA Tour. Wow. So Tampa with LET. Yeah. Yeah, just because it says European Tour doesn't mean it's European Tour, right? That's that's the, that's so, that's another confusion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So LET was playing in Tampa. Yes. That I is mean, weird. but they've also they haven't played in Europe this year because it's too early in the season and I don't think the DP World Tour have played in Europe yet this year because it's not warm enough well no but I almost feel like America though feels like that's the yeah. LPGA you're not allowed to, to touch are you yeah that's well, what it that's feels like that's the perception like. isn't yeah. it and that's what's wrong with it maybe it is I think you're yeah. right yeah um, you were doing on course commentary I was something that you've not really done before no I do it for the uh, men's golf but I do less men's golf and I do it for the Open Championship but in the women's game when you're cutting costs 
one of them would be an on-course commentator. Mm -hmm. So normally I sit in the commentary box, which is basically me watching the TV screen. So I'll go out, look at the course, ask some players details, go to the driving range, and then from two o'clock to six o'clock, I'll just sit down in front of a television and call golf. But with the LPGA, they got a bit more money, so you do an on-course commentary like Radar, yeah. like Wayne Riley. Yeah, a good job. Yeah. And then what, so what, what's your, like, your task there? You, you follow one group or you follow lots you of different You follow holes? one group. It's often the, the final group or the featured group if it's Thursday, Friday. If they're suddenly not playing well and there's a hot like three ball on the golf course, you might get moved. But more often than not, you'll stay with your group. You'll call all three players shots, what, what club they're hitting, what's the wind direction, what's the lie, what's the yardage. All the stuff that's on a TV screen you can't see. You can't see. How they interact with the caddy, etc. How close do you get to the players? They must be relatively close. Yeah, but yeah so you, you, call, you call from 100 yards in front at least. So they hit their tee shot, I'm landing at their, t I'm stood at their tee shot where it lands, right. I get the number, then I'll walk 100 yards in front. So how do you know what hit club you hit then on the right for So this is the bit. Go on. This is the secret. <laughs> is how did you think it happened? That you'd look in the bag? I thought it was just like a calculated oh, guess. Oh yeah, either a calculated guess or you'd look in the bag and see they're taking a 7 nine out. Get this. No, they signal. Who signal? The caddy does. The caddy, so that's wedge. Yeah. What? Wedge, and then if you go low, so you've got nine iron, eight iron, seven iron, I never six irons that one, and then if you're going up, then it's and obviously. And does the never forget? Sometimes, because sometimes if it's a, and then like these, I've had to learn what the wedges are. So this is like gap wedge up here. What? So I know. This I've is never the heard thing. This so when, and is that in the men's game as well? Everybody does. What? Every caddy signals. No way. So just to create for, for everyone listening. But not only so, like Sophie, this. Sophie's down at the showing side, like. A a, 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 yeah, a fist, a fist for, for a wedge. Yeah. You, your hand, you. So if it's five iron, obviously that's, five irons, five fingers, and it's high. Yeah, that's makes okay. Sense. But if it's nine iron, it's four fingers, and then you turn your hand upside down so your fingers are low. So that's like the bottom of your bag. I, I don't that's understand how you got bag. to nine from that. Because you've already got the five. You've already got the five. And you're underneath. You're underneath. But I thought it was six. That's wedge. Oh god. That's six. <laughs> six. Yeah. What the heck? So have you ever seen that one? I think recently Tiger played, didn't he? And he signalled down by his side yeah. that Gary Woodland or someone was hitting. Oh, his, yeah. And he did the three fingers. It was an eight iron. And everybody was like, oh, my God. He's telling everybody. He's telling his playing partners what club Gary Woodland's hit. Yeah. Or was it just Justin Thomas? What he could have been doing is uh, Nota Begay is one of his best friends. Yeah. Nota Begay does on-course commentary. What he could be doing is signalling to Nota that that's the club he's hitting, which would probably be more of the case. You know How what? Is this? It's I, I don't know. So it's at the side. So the, the caddy will grab the bag, walk away from the player, and you'd be talking through the shot going, right, they've got 125 yards, the pin's at the front. What they'll try and do is land this long of it and spin it back, and then the, the caddy will, you know, like you must the, always have to have eyes on the caddy then. Yeah, you're always looking at the caddy. You're very rarely looking at the player. I'm almost surprised situation. that the caddy can be bothered in a sense because what's kind of in it for them? Really? They're just thinking about their player who's their boss Absolutely. hitting a good when, shot. When the, when, the, um, when the player's really struggling and the caddy's like... Yeah, the last... They can, f they can forget. But it's part of the TV. It's part of working yeah, together no, to, to, make, to just, make it a better product. I suppose if your player's playing well and you're all good and everything, you're going to get a great move. Yeah. yeah, three, four, whatever. Wow, didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, no, is there any, any other little tricks and tips? All golf is fake. It's like WWE. <laughs> so it's all set yeah. up beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> Wind of clack lip out was all uh, yeah. made up. That was we ridiculous. We call lip out. shots off tape. So we, not all the shots that we call are live. If you're, say there might be two on course commentators guy you're with the uh, the Rory McIlroy group which yeah. most of Rory's shots are played live as much as people go you're not showing enough Rory most of them will come yeah, they on live plenty of Rory. Yeah. They show every shot I might be doing the group behind which is Justin Thomas Jordan Spieth and Max Homer so they'll come live to you but they won't come live to me so I'll watch um a par three, mm -hmm. let's say, and I've just seen Jordan Spieth knock it to 15 feet. I've seen the signal, it's a six iron. I've seen it. Then my producer says to me, right, we're coming to you, Sophie, par three, third hole. I've already seen it, it's not live. So he says to me, Spieth stood over it. 
<sighs> contact, they'll go one, two, three, contact and lay out. So you will go Jordan Spieth, 180 yards, six iron. Contact, you'll hear the contact and you'll lay out. So you've commentated on something you've already seen, what? but you're not seeing it, you can only hear it. Do you know what? I go, oh, oh I've stiffed got it and it's still feeling. Yeah, you could. <laughs> this is a perfect number for Spieth. I'm expecting this one wow. close. <laughs> He's missed three to the left so far. I think he might miss this one to yeah, the left. Yeah, I mean, you can. Would Some people have the, I think on the Golf Channel, for the, um, they have an actual monitor. So Colt has a monitor and he'll call it off the monitor. So that's why I take it, obviously it's not always live, that sometimes you'll be watching Rory, who is live, lining up a putt, you'll hear a massive cheer and it cuts back obviously afterwards, doesn't it? And you know that putt's going to go in or whatever exactly, you've heard yeah. the cheer. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of presumed some of it wasn't live. Yeah, definitely. but the fact yeah. you've got to call it as live is yeah, quite... Yeah, and, it, and it's probably easier in the commentary box because you're watching oh, what yeah, everyone else on TV. Oh yeah, because you're watching what, yeah, but when you're out there you can't, with, you can't see it. This is going to sound like a ridiculous question now, people will be laughing when I say this, but genuine question, when I... I don't watch football the same way that Gary Neville watches football, obviously, because I know nothing about football. I just watch them try and score, and you hear them dissect the, the way the defenders were stood and all this stuff. And again, when I watch some of the golf podcasts or listen and you know, real experts, and I claim to be a very casual fan, how do you watch golf? Like if you're sitting down to watch golf, do you just do you, you must watch it in a different way to how I watch it, because you can tell by things you say, it's so much more almost thought out. Yeah, so I commentate on golf how I would have played it. So if you know if you miss the green, mm -hmm. like right, where would where would I want to land it? What's my sh what's the lie like? So I would discuss it in that way, which is why I think caddies are really good on course commentators. So oh, yeah. John Wood, who kind of coocher, I think he's yeah, brilliant, Bones. and Bones was great mm. as well because the caddies have got that conversation. I had, I'd end up, uh, commentary in general, I struggle with because I'm always analysing the commentary. Yeah. What are they saying? Oh, they've said wow a lot. They say wow all the, so I would quite often turn it down so I can just watch, right, well. watch the golf. But I, yeah, I think I do. I don't, I don't just watch golf. I think about, that's why I said to you last night, Scheffler wins yeah. like, quite early because I can see like Xander can't make himself hit a shot. He can't get like hit it close enough. And Wyndham was struggling, and I knew he would come back because he's Wyndham wouldn't have cared if he'd have hit it in water on 17. Just mm. would not have cared. Where Xander looked like he just wanted to find the green and give himself yeah. a chance. He was almost playing for second. Yeah. Well, not. Se I don't think he, if you asked him he wouldn't. But he, he just he didn't have that change of gear because of the situations he's been in in, in the past. See, that's not how I watch golf at all. If you had, you know, you see a lot of alternative commentary now, and you turned the TV on last night and you had four choices, okay? okay. One of them is the standard commentary that everyone gets. Another one is silence, mm -hmm. like nothing. Another one is like a, like a fan, like someone who's like quite excited about it. Or the last option is like a real, uh, like Mark Brody, real like stat man who's dead into like all the stats and everything. Which Which option would you go for? I think I, what I I like the certain commentators that I like to listen to. I I really enjoy the on course commentary because I can see on the TV that. But if radar's saying this lies horrible because just something that I don't already know. Um, but yeah, I do. I, I just I turn it down now. I like. But it. But with the football, I like to hear the commentary. Yeah. 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 Did, did you see because you need the atmosphere, don't you? Yeah. When Ray Dice today said a putt had about twenty foot swing, and yeah. the graphic came up it was twenty three, and he hadn't seen it, and Laura Davis was like, "Yeah, it's twenty three foot." He went, "Yeah, yeah, that's what." I like to think like he said twenty. He said twenty foot or just a bit more of swing, and it literally came up twenty three foot. Like he, he obviously knows what he's talking about. Like to get it that close. Yeah, I think I I'd, I'd personally want to listen to like the fan commentary. Yeah, the fun. Yeah, like I'm quite that. like, so like, oh my god, what's he going to do on 17? This is going to be crazy. Oh, what if it's in the water? Like, I almost want like YouTube kind of like yeah. drama to it. Uh, well, I think sometimes I could. I don't think I've, I've said this before. I think the presentation is very difficult. I would really struggle with live commentary and on-course commentary. I think I'd be better at the on-course stuff than maybe the, the actual yeah. live in the booth. But it's like. It's the idea that it, they never want to go super, super high or never want to go super, super low, which you have to be kind of somewhat professional all the I way through the try, it. I think actually we've, we've been encouraged to be a little bit more playful with what I think I think it was really playful the Peter Alice mm. type of commentary wasn't it and then it got a little bit and, and then it and then it, it needs to be more serious and I think it's got but now we are encouraged to um, be a little bit more light hearted. For instance, if you're listening on the radio, 
they, they always say to me, if someone's listening on the radio, the chances are you're their company. They're driving yeah. somewhere and you're keeping them company. So I think on radio, when you listen to the cricket, for instance, and the golf, it is more, yeah, but, but in, when you've got it on TV, it's the pictures say a lot. But I, I do think we are trying to be um, more enthusiastic and more playful. You do open it. radio, don't you? And yeah. I, I, if I go to the open and I'm driving home on the Sunday or the Saturday, or whatever, and I put it, I do put it on. It is like you said, it's, it's nice. It's quite like soothing to listen I to. I think they do a great job of radio commentary. I love. I've got to say, it's one of my favourite weeks of the year because to to book, to work with. I'm not. I'm not an expert. At, at, broadcasting I think I'm an expert at golf but you're working with people that have broadcast for years yeah. you know they've done that late night radio show when nobody's listening and they're by themselves and they have got to try and have some enthusiasm and they're just so good at it they're so good uh, I've asked you this question before have you gone through training through any of this yes I've like sought out training from people that I like at commentary and then people that have worked for Sky Sports, BBC, producers, directors. But you're um, almost doing that off your own back? Yes, yeah. It's quite crazy isn't it, you almost just get like dropped into it. Yeah, just see if you can do it. <laughs> Press, there's the live button, see if you can do it. I honestly, I find it, you know, so like I say, there's so many bits going on. I, I would be forever, I'd have too many bits and bobs going on in my pocket. You, you got a voice somebody in, in your ear the whole time. I voice someone in your ear, which I've had before when I did the TV show in, uh, for Golf Channel with um, Drive versus Drive. I had someone, in, it was, it, I don't like Very it at all. It's yeah. really distracting. Like, I could be chatting to you now and I've got literally someone talking to me. I'm like, God, like, what are you doing? I don't need someone in when my ear When you're interviewing now. someone and they're going, rapid. It up, wrap yeah. it up, and they're not wrapping up, and you're like, oh, stop talking. <laughs> but what where do you think then, with that in mind as well? Like, obviously, with things like the um, Apple Vision Pro that got announced recently, and all this VR and AR and all this mad stuff, like, in another 5, 10, 15 years' time, I wonder how we'll actually watch golf. Like, because surely it's not very far away, if not doable now, we just put a 360 camera on a seat at the 18th of the Masters at Augusta, and then you could put a headset on and be sat in that seat. Like, I mean, better still, it could even stick out the golf bag. Like, yeah. imagine, imagine literally being almost like above the golf bag and you can hear well, the caddy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the caddy, you can hear the player, like there. You'd, right, you'd want to be able to have a little switch where you go onto the green. Once the shot's been hit, you could go onto the green. I, th I think it's a must now to have caddy and player chat in general. Yeah. I, I, I think there's no excuse. I think players on the uh, if you watch American football they're all mic'd up and, and there's a trust with the producer to not put anything out that shouldn't be and I believe that that should happen I think Liv have the mics mm, don't they yeah. that, that should be a must for me I, I think that's where people were scared at first was this idea that um I'm guessing a lot of chat between players and caddies was definitely not broadcastable you know but I don't think you've got to you've got to trust the TV they you know we're all in it together we're all about putting the best product out there possible and and that's what I say to the players like if someone's asked I, I gave an interview to a player after an event in Thailand and I hadn't seen a shot of what she'd played because I'd been with the other group so I just said Alban I'm ever so sorry I have not seen one shot before we went live can, I'm going to ask you a very open-ended question. Can you just go for it? Because if sometimes I used to get interviewed after a round and think, did he not watch anything I just mm. did? I've just shot 65. But sometimes we haven't. Yeah. And we're all in it together to make the product better. And as mm. soon as I told her that, she was like, great, yeah, hold a shot on seven. Oh, that's good. Well done. I'd never, I'd, all I'd got was a scorecard. And they've got to trust the television that they're not going to throw them under the bus. Yeah, I suppose that's similar to the relationship we've had with players on the channel. Mm. Like, you know, some things get said and you're like, well, let's not keep that in, like, let's cut that. And it's not, it just, it might put somebody in hot water. It's not meant yes. to, it's a casual comment. Be like, let's let's part, let's not mm -hmm. leave, you know, let's put that in. But I suppose if it's live, that's where it's probably a bit trickier. But I think they think everything's live as well. Yeah. As well. There'll be, there'll be, I think, not everything we show is live and also if you are playing live sport you've got you know you would be a bit tamer on some of the stuff they don't swear as much as they would normally would no, they not at all so i think I, you know i've talk, spoke about swearing a bit i know because obviously live have, have, it's not bleeped out it's kind mm. of on there and i'm not 
I, people swear I swear God like we're playing golf like but, a docker <laughs> but like, I do think there should be a, a setting to be able to even bleep it out you know I, I like seeing the emotion I actually like seeing players swear but for the young fans I just don't think you should have the actual word in there really or words I think anything that you can see behind the scenes though like hear them having that um, discussion between what club they're going to hit even when you hear a little bit on the PGA Tour like oh 65 going to hit a soft eight iron or whatever they say like it does give you that bit more like insight obviously into the shot and, and you buy into it more and and I think one of the things I've said a few times now on like with full swing again I keep going back to you but seeing more of the players in the you know just being themselves makes you buy into them more like I was saying last week that you know I was never no disrespect never a fan of Keegan Bradley and then I watched the full swing of him not getting picked for the Ryder Cup and I felt so sorry for him and I was kind of rooting for him and I think I will do more so watching him now and even those little nuggets before a shot I think would, would make you fans of players more have you had a chance to watch the full swing series yet? I haven't and I suppose that's a, a really bad thing for being in the industry and it's I've terrible. not even finished the end of the first full swing I had this chat with Nelly Corder <laughs> about it I was like oh you know do you watch all this and it was about the Beckham documentary and she was like so if we know it's still not real mm. like you, you know it's still not but I will watch it obviously I'm on drive to survive at the well, minute this, I, this I try and watch other stuff else golf yeah. just consumes me this is my point I, I really enjoyed Full Swing and I kind of watched it consciously so that if we spoke about it I could say but what's been I don't know any figures so I'm kind of guessing this but you've not finished it yet I don't think no, have you I'm on the Fitzpatrick show so a lot of people I know who in theory should have been absolutely just destroying it in one night like you two for example haven't had finished well, it or watched it two weeks it. before it came out well exactly I got, and I then, got an early preview and last I must admit last year I'd watched it before anyone else had seen it well, this year I'm like kind of and unless was, I'm mistaken I've not heard I don't know if I'm in the right forums to hear but I've not heard many non-golfers binging it whereas I'm the other way I've, I've just about to say the flip side I've got a lot of my mates that are non-golfers who've watched it. See, that's that good. Watch it, because I, I think that's what it's aimed at. I completely, yeah. but I've not heard it really. But whether I've just not been in the right places or asked people, I don't know. I certainly, from the, the, the again, I've not finished the whole of second series just yet, but I definitely think, feel like the first series was more aimed at non golfers. Yeah, to get them in. I feel like this time it's a little bit less aimed at non golfers. It feels like you need to have a bit of knowledge to watch this one. Um, uh, the, this Fitzpatrick one was annoying me I've tried to watch it like three times <laughs> I love but I love both of them I think they're brilliant it's, it's, it's little, it's little it's yeah, Alex. Alex is it yeah it's so honestly if they've said it once they've said it literally quite literally a million he's times that he's in his shadow yeah. and I'm like forgot, just drop it like yeah, but the so whole the boys think that or is that what that's the narrative they've created that Alex is living in obviously in Matt's shadow and he's trying to get out of that shadow and but it, it seems like it's so put in the, the story I don't think that's true I know them I don't think that's yeah, true yeah it just seems like it's so in the story it's like alright we kind of get it yeah, yeah, it, right, yeah. Right, I didn't like I'm not enjoying this episode but if you think about if you think to. about the fact of it take away factual and put it as like an arc and a narrative you've had this, the story of that episode was obviously Alex is in his shadow quote unquote he then does really well at the Open Championship and that gets him out of that shadow to some degree so it's, like a, it's a great story but how real is it I don't know yeah it just feels like I don't know it's the first it's the first episode I've literally tried to watch like three or four times I keep turning it off and I'm like I just can't get through this episode and it's frustrating me really but isn't that the point of series like there's going to be one episode that is just amazing and then another one that you go oh yeah that, that was alright like the right. Matt Fitzpatrick one last year I was literally crying at the end of it mm. like it was like one of the best scenes I've ever seen in my life when he played that last hole and the music was playing and after you've got oh, your brother yeah. and his family running but on it's like amazing to, to your point a second ago I think you've almost got to see it as a non-golfer if you were a non-golfer you just said you know them both if you don't have a clue who they are and watch the episode that's actually quite a good story isn't it and whether it's not quite true a lot of those drives to survive stuff might not be that true but I wouldn't know because I don't really no, watch F1 that's true. so it's, it is tailored for those those people for sure yeah I'm looking forward to getting into the Ryder Cup episodes because I've still not watched those because yeah, I didn't yet. think they were allowed I thought what was that whole thing about they're not, they weren't allowed in the locker rooms was there because no, people be. like Xander Shoffley he, he didn't want it but I was on the driving range at the Ryder Cup and Luke was talking to Thomas Bjorn and they, and they looked round and basically went who are you? and they were like oh we're Netflix and there's faces he was like don't worry it can't go in like whatever we've got whatever we've just videoed of you it's going to be like b-roll yeah it cut. so I was like oh I didn't even realise you were alive yeah it was here. it was quite heavily there were two radical episodes and it was they were yeah it was good yeah it's insightful like, yeah do you think I, I think again what would be nice to see um, is like say if you threw in a few LPJ stars or there was a bit of narrative in there or, or there's a full swing you know female mm. version or whatever like so I think again that's 
don't think you always get to see behind the scenes for a lot of certainly uh, female players like it feels I don't know it's hard to watch anyway and then I think they're more willing to do stuff like you mentioned on social media to get the name out a little bit more as well I think that'd be quite a cool little series to watch even if it was just a one hour documentary which showed did, a bit more did you ever watch the one was it a no laying up one on oh, Madeline Sagstrom didn't they no but they did Stanford oh. University I'm sure it was oh, the yeah, women's yeah, team the that Stanford was really one. good the LPG have done I think it's called Drive On and they've, they've tried they've paid for their own and, and tried to do it at some events mm. but yeah I mean that is, that, that's the next thing and, and I mean talking about like brothers I mean there's so many sisters on the LPGA tour it just seems quite normal that the, both sisters are playing <laughs> oh, even if you linked it with like a, a Min Woo Lee and a Min Ji Lee yeah episode. there was a good there was um I haven't watched all of it but an Australian news channel did something with Minji and Minwoo and it was like yin and yang aren't they I mean you've, you've met yeah, Minwoo yeah. Minji's the total opposite to him and that was that was a really nice piece and something like that would be good but obviously it's getting them in the same place at the same time yeah. so quick change of subject we have got so what will be yesterday when this comes out but today that we're doing this podcast the video of the Put View X goggles for yes. so have you seen these by the way the Put View goggles is this what some of the players are wearing? At the well, minute? it's like the Apple thing you were spoke about before that goes over your head, like the VR thing, and then you go onto a golf green and it essentially gives you the break and everything of the putt. Have, have, have you seen some players using them? I've seen, well, I, didn't, I don't know if it is the it, same now. They're like, literally like big yeah. goggles. It, so, put view, the technology of put view is incredible anyway, because mm -hmm. it, it can project the slope, the speed I've and seen everything. It on, like Justin Rose has got a putting green. Yeah, yeah. We've got one in our studio. It. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So they've they've now tested it with can that happen out on the golf course in a real world scenario? And yeah. this is the first iteration of the goggles. And spoiler alert, as I say my full review goes out um yesterday, yesterday just listen to this. Is it's not perfect. Okay. But for a first it's version gone. It's really, really good. Like literally, you put so on like the goggles. So like what you were saying, 23 feet, in 23 feet, 20 feet. Yeah. Right, that type of thing. And, and, it's, it's, just and it's, it's literally, I'm trying to explain it to the people listening. It's a little bit buggy, so it's all augmented reality. I want to try to get a clip up. So it's so AR, so you, you, you put it on, yeah, and it's, it's all voice activated, and you say, hey, put view. Um, there we go, that's Rick in the goggles. That's what he's looking at. You can see that, then you hit the put. So it's like what comes up on the television, literally. doesn't it? So it says, and it gives you the break, it's ridiculous. So you can set it to the green speed, you say, hey, put for your new target, so it wraps a circle around the hole, you then go back to the ball and say, uh, you know, hey, put for your golf ball, and then it literally comes up with these lines. So it's got it's got the, the line that the ball should roll on. You can Correct. also change all that. You can that. have everything you want, yeah. You can have the corridor, you can have the, the tracer line, um, you can have alignment lines. That one went in, obviously. So they have one, so what they use on the television for Live and PGA Tour, is it that same type of I technology? I don't think it, they're the same technologies between the two. I don't know what each no. one of them use weirdly. I feel like the one on Live is actually through an app called Shot Tracer. Okay. Um, but I don't know the one. I, I don't know how well, they work it on TV. Do you not think that that, that is? I think it's twelve thousand pounds right so now. Expensive. It's very expensive. I think like it's twenty thousand pounds potentially. But you obviously you're a, a golf coach. So imagine teaching someone who's struggling with putting. You can't quite understand how much they have to aim for break or whatever it might be, and putting that on the head and then showing them they can see. Like, oh my days! Imagine that's right. having somebody come for a putting lesson. That's I mean, that never happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. How many putting lessons did you give in your time? Oh, I mean, obviously I was ba mainly well, based yeah, at driving yeah, ranges, but <laughs> a few, comes yeah, from. a few more than expected. But you're right; it's, it's definitely become well, more how popular. Much that, yeah. And even when that comes out to other part, I'm, who knows what's going to like in the future when it can help with your full swing or chipping you know, or whatever it looks like bunker play but putting those goggles on someone can see oh my days that's where I should be aiming or that's what I need to be doing like how well that's where I think most of the time it's where they think they're aiming and where they actually yeah. are there's two different things yeah. as well because so what you can be do good. that as well as we showed there you can actually record what I see as well mm. so you can almost analyse that afterwards from a coaching point of view I think that's arguably the most important thing because you could say where did you start that and they went straight and you can actually show them the footage back and so you can straight off the face that it went left well that's the, the thing with Scotty Scheffler wasn't it it was like where he was aiming wasn't right and he was he thought he was starting the whole thing with the Scotty Scheffler thing is in his press conference he was saying the putter that I had I struggled to put the ball in the middle of the face so when I came back to strike I was hitting out the heel whereas this new putter I can line it up out the middle of the face and this is the 
the best player in the world struggles to put the ball in the middle of the club face when he lines it up. It's a bit mad, down there. isn't it? He yeah. needs to move his feet more. <laughs> when he's putting. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening. Sophie, you've been amazing as always. Uh, I know you probably wanted to go into much more stats around the players. Anything you feel like we missed that you want to cover? This is your chance. Sophie's not normally, normally doing just... proper golf podcasts, so this isn't. No, it was quite nice. Not to... I mean, I've got the leaderboard out in front of me, and I didn't even need to. We leave don't need it. strokes. Game. Without looking, who came tenth? Joking Rory. <laughs> no, he was fifteenth. Oh, I'm guessing. Was he? I don't know. I'm just Joel guessing. Joel Damon came eleventh. He actually did do very well. Joel Damon, to be fair, mm. which is good. Um, but after this, we're going to straight turn the cameras off, audio only. The little bonus clubhouse podcast will yeah. come out on Friday. Um, who knows what's going to go on? There's no cameras, so... Who knows? That's where Excited. the fun begins. Guys, thanks for watching. Listening, as always, be sure to check out Sophie Walk on all of the social media and good luck with the rest of commentary, etc. for the rest of 2024. I'm sure we'll, you'll be back on the show very soon, hopefully. Yeah, nice to Maybe have you. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing the bite size. <laughs>